So uh, th there's a list of some of the psychiatric effects that you'd see with Accutane, depression, psychosis, suicide. Um, and this is from the exact product monograph. The product monograph is the approved wording that the company uh, is able to say about, it's what the company is able to say about their drug. In this case, some patients taking Accutane have had thoughts about hurting themselves, suicidal thoughts and so on. Um, you have to ask yourself, what's the condition that we're treating here? Are we treating something that's very severe and debilitating? Well, you know, maybe I'm just an old guy, but we're treating acne, okay? Now, of course, if you're 14 and you're a girl and you have acne, or a boy, it could be a very serious thing, right? Uh, I think any parent, though, would want to know that the, the benefits of treating your child's acne come with some potential harm. What's the dope on antidepressants? Now, I, I mentioned suicide in the, in the previous, uh, previous slide. There has been a lot of information that's come out about antidepressants in, say, the last five years. The link between uh, antidepressants and suicide has made a lot of headlines. But really, what, what is the nature of the problem? And I'm using this as an example to show you how numbers can be sort of uh, sometimes twisted. So when you look at, at people who are depressed, from a, there's, a, there's a, a number of specific definitions of what you kind of have to exhibit in order to be depressed. And um, so when they study those groups of people in large clinical studies, they give some of them pl placebo and some of them the drug, and then they follow them over time. And in groups like this, you have a difference between, you know, 8.4% versus 3.6% suicides. Oh, sorry, not percent. 8.4 per thousand versus 3.6 per thousand. So I, I, uh, I drew that as a graph. And if suicide was a good thing and increasing it was a good thing, you could see the, the way the pharmaceutical company would, would advertise this is a massive increase in terms of the relative importance of this. So 3.6%, 3.6 out of 1,000 versus 8.4 out of 1,000 you could say that increases the suicide rate by 133%, right? Or you could also say, well, if it went from 3.6 up to 8.4, it's only an increase of, you know, 4.8 per thousand or about 0.48%. This is really important because those kinds of massively wild numbers that you see around the benefits of pharmaceuticals are often misleading. What you really need to know is, what was the actual rate? What was the actual In this case, I mean, it's neither good nor bad. It's what it is, 0.48%, uh, which means uh, half a person out of 1,000, I'm uh, sorry, half a person out of 100 would, um, would attempt suicide. Just to be objective, where are your numbers from? This is from, this is from um, a study called, it was in the Public Library of Science in 2008. I'm going to get to it in a second. Okay. In fact, I think that's the media article that generated that, that or the, that's one of the media articles that was generated out of this particular study. So, in this case, they looked at um, they looked at uh, they did a meta analysis. So they took there's many many different antidepressant studies, but what they want to do is let's look at the whole sort of overall body of them. And they concluded, well, the benefits were, were, were so small as to be almost non-existent. And their conclusion was not clinically significant. But again, these treatments are widely, widely used. And a lot of people will say they help. And um, to which I would say that's, that's good. And if you're taking a drug that's helping you, uh, that's a good thing. If you're aware of the alternatives. In this case, the differences are often tested between uh, the drug and the placebo, and a lot of times if people, in, in these clinical studies, when people are given placebo, they also improve as well. It's, it's something about the psych psychology of being helped by a healthcare professional that, that I guess, can help. Um, widely used, uh, probably um, in British Columbia, something like somewhere between 20 and 25 percent of women between about 25 and 45 will have had an antidepressant in the previous five years, something like that. About, about a quarter of the population. Um, 
Oftentimes, though, and antidepressants aren't unique in this area, the drugs don't, um, what we think we know about the drug doesn't actually compare very well with what the evidence says. In the case of uh, SSRIs, these are the antidepressants, serotonin, serotonin reuptake inhibitors. So these would be drugs like Prozac, Paxil, Zoloft, um, drugs like that. Um, there has been a lot of criticism from people in my field around the whole serotonin hypothesis, which is uh, if you have low serotonin, then uh, um, an antidepressant will help. And that has been highly criticized by a number of researchers saying, this isn't like, it's not like you've got a diabetic, that they lack insulin and you need to replace it. Um, in term, terms of long-term effects, I've heard physicians say, you need to take the drug for six to eight weeks to see any effect, to which I said, well, how long has, it, has the drug been studied? Well, sometimes these drugs have been studied in four or six week trials. So the recommended time that the physician might suggest you take a drug is actually longer than how it was studied in a clinical trial, okay? Um, we're often told that the psychiatric drugs such as the SSRIs have no side effects. And I think the experience in the real world is, is, is showing that to be somewhat flawed. There are many known side effects related to antidepressants. You're probably familiar with and have friends who have had them or take them, and you know that, that the uh, side effects can be quite serious. And one of the worst, I think, and we've seen this a lot, is it's not actually taking antidepressants, it's when you try to stop taking antidepressants that things can be really quite difficult. This is just a, a, a graph that I put up. One of the, one of the things that, we, that has sort of come to light in the last five years is that a lot of the earlier trials of the antidepressants had never been published or had only uh, had been essentially buried. There's the, the famous uh, Paxil 329 study, which showed that um, the, the drug, not only was it not beneficial, but it was actually harmful when it was used in people. That study wasn't published. So you, what we've seen, certainly with antidepressants, is a sense of publication bias. The positive trials get published, the negative trials are either published in abstract or not published at all. And uh, this is the kind of thing has medical journal editors around the world saying, we're not gonna be publishing your clinical trial unless you register it with us in the first place because we wanna know whether it's bad or good. We wanna know beforehand. We're, only, we're going to be publishing in a sort of open and transparent way. The advent of the internet has been very interesting as a, as a drug researcher because you, like anything else, you start hearing stories of people who have experiences that look very different than the published clinical studies, right? And you, this is an example of a website where people who have taken SSRIs basically go on and they share their stories, and either stories of themselves or, or people that they know who they think is related to the drug. Now, this is not scientific at all. And you wouldn't use this as a source of, of, of any kind of evidence um, in terms of, uh, of how it would shape your behavior. But it's kind of interesting that there's been a number of documented stories of the relationship between some fairly serious events, suicides, homicides, and so on, and you know, including things like um, school shootings and, and uh, rage incidents and so on. And, uh, there's a, there's a screenshot of the, of the site where people uh, have, have sort of started to make the connections between the use of, of antidepressants uh, and, uh, and uh, horrific mass murder type things. So in terms of the, the, the advisory, so when they start noticing problems with drugs, typically the regulator is going to put out a, uh, a warning. And sometimes these warnings build up over time. And in terms of the relationship between um, suicides and children and adolescents treated with antidepressants, we've known now for something like six years that this is, has, is a problem and those drugs should not be used in children. Uh, and I think we've seen the rates drop off. I don't think they've disappeared at all. They've issued black box warnings. Uh, the, the, I guess the point that I'm making is that drugs can be, I mean, the, the antidepressants have been on the market since the mid 80s. Say Prozac has been on the market since I think 1986. 